Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our virtual worship series. This video is for September 1st, 2024, which is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm glad you're with us this morning. Thank you for tuning in. Um, now let's take a moment to frame our hearts and minds before God as we get ready to worship today. All right, now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Guide us into your grace and strengthen us to live out your command to love one another without being stained by an uncaring world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. Now, the readings for today are Mark chapter 7, but I'm also going to read you a one line or two from the first reading from Deuteronomy and a second reading from James, because I'll be touching on them. Um, let's see. Deuteronomy verse 9. But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Deuteronomy chapter 4, uh, verse, verse 9. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And then... Um, James chapter 1, verses 17 through 27, but I'm going to read you 17 through 20. Okay. For every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And now for the gospel according to St. Mark in the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tra tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other tra traditions that they observe, like the washing of cups and pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with unclean hands? And Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can make you unclean, but the things that come out are what make you unclean. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So this morning's gospel passage begins with an interesting entourage of Pharisees and teachers of the law being sent uh, from Jerusalem specifically to confront Jesus. <clears throat> Remember, this is not the first time they've tried to trip him up. There have been already a few encounters in early parts of Mark's gospel between Jesus, the disciples, and the Pharisees. You know, questions about fasting already, um, about the disciples working and healing on the Sabbath. <clears throat> and so in this morning's text, 
This delegation has come to get any dirt they can possibly find to build a case against Jesus because they've already made up their minds that they want to derail his ministry. And this time, they are sure that they have found that dirt, quite literally, on the disciples' hands. And they say, aha, you have broken the traditions of the elders, um, you know, given to us by our ancestors. How can you do that? Um, you know, and the translation of that is, you are not doing things the way they've always been done. <laughs> so there it is. The Pharisees were the original <laughs> Lutherans. <laughs> I mean, but, but look, here's the thing. The Pharisees, um, they were all about pure law, pure religion, and all that. And they had made religion and law and tradition into a science. They knew all the rules. They always did the right things. And they were the most perfectly disciplined people anyone would ever meet. Um, but the problem was, originally the Pharisees wanted to be pure. But now, by now, their traditions had, had gone way beyond um, anything. Their traditions had become sacred themselves. They've gone beyond tradition, beyond even scripture. They had completely lost perspective. And that's what Jesus is criticizing when he quotes Isaiah and says, you're serving me with your lips, but your hearts aren't in it. Um, so they had lost track of why they did what they did. So if we don't want to lose track of that, how do we keep perspective. Well, not by abandoning rules and history and liturgy and structure and doctrine, but by balancing it. So now I'm, I'm going to give credit for this image to my theology professor uh, in Chicago, uh, who was Rob Johnston. Now he's teaching over at, at Fuller Seminary. Um, but <laughs> this is just to prove to you that I actually listened to something while I was at school 30 years ago. <laughs> but here's the image. Imagine um, you have a cloth tapestry that you want to hang on to your wall, right? It's a beautiful cloth picture of something. You want to hang it onto your wall. It's hard to hang cloth on a wall because to keep it smooth, you have to keep equal tension on all four corners, right? And, and the four corners of the tapestry of your faith life, Rob Johnston said, are scripture, doctrine, tradition, and experience. Now, what the Pharisees had done over the years was they had pulled so hard on, on this one corner that they pulled all the other tacks out of the wall, and the whole tapestry was now hanging just on tradition. And that's what Jesus was frustrated with. Tradition had become more important than scripture, doctrine, faith, and experience, right? So, look, as, as your own life stretches and wears on, you want to keep adjusting the tension between those four things to keep things smooth. And if we make the mistake of getting too hung up on any one aspect, whether it's scripture or doctrine or tradition or experience, right? If you get too hung up on any one piece, right, then you run the risk of losing your perspective and missing out on what the other three pieces have to offer to deepen and enrich your own experience and faith life. Um, and plus, when you lean too hard on one thing, you make the key pharisaical mistake that they made in the gospel, and that is you are no longer learning because you are no longer listening. As James warns throughout the second reading for today, but the part that I did read you, he says, be quick to listen and slow to speak. <laughs> I sure wish we could turn on the TV and hear some of that, <laughs> Right. Um, oh, and just another little fun fact for you. I, I got from somebody, I don't even remember who this was, but they gave me this acronym for, for um, me to teach. And I wish I could remember it myself when I'm in the middle of an argument. But the acronym is WAIT, W-A-I-T. And that stands for Why Am I Talking? If we could just remember to wait when we are in a debate with somebody, wouldn't that be great? So, so here it is. You have the tapestry of your life. And if you spend time adjusting all four corners of it, um, it'll help you keep balance. And that will help you stay flexible because you'll always be able to listen and learn and evolve and strengthen your faith. And by doing that, then you can accomplish, first off, 
what Deuteronomy asks, which I read you, um, and that is watch yourself closely. Um, we often use our religion and our faith life to watch others closely. But really what Deuteronomy is saying is the purpose of all of this balance and, and faith life is to watch yourself closely. And that's fascinating. And also, then the second thing is to achieve the ultimate goal and definition of religion that James gives in, in his letter, and that I read you too. And that is the first purpose of religion. Oh, no, I didn't read that to you. <laughs> the first purpose of religion, James says, is this, um, to care for orphans and widows in their distress. That is the first purpose of religion, because James says, religion that is pure and spotless before God is to care for orphans and widows in their distress. And then he continues with the second purpose of faith. Um, religion that is pure and spotless before God is this, to keep oneself unstained by the world. So the purpose of all of this balancing is, is, is not so you can eliminate all the bad and evil in the world and, 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 and you know, criticize people for how bad they are, but it is so that you can live unaffected by that evil world, to keep perspective in this world no matter what. That's pretty cool. So go home today and adjust the tapestry of your life of faith a bit and get everything smooth and balanced again. And then take a few steps back from it because maybe when you look at your tapestry from a distance, you can see that the picture of your life of faith is grace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Take some time to share that peace with the people uh, around you this morning, sitting with you, watching, perhaps maybe go outside if it's a nice day uh, where you are. Um, talk to a neighbor, talk to a friend, talk to an enemy, make a call, send a text. Let somebody know that the peace of God is with them too. And maybe that will help smooth out the tapestry of their own life experience and faith. In the meantime, gathered into one by that Holy Spirit, which empowers all of us to balance our lives, let us pray the way Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each one of you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. And remember, you are the body of Christ raised up for the world. So get out there and go in peace, unstained by the world and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this morning. I hope that you have a balanced and fruitful week. And I look forward to seeing you either right here in video or right over there in church next Sunday. God bless you all.